All right, let's go ahead and make this next part. And this is going to be a practice project part. And uh, we're going to switch to the practice project that we have on here. And we'll create a standard.ipt. And here we go. So this is part five of, we're on page nine. And it says we're going to model the part below and law, using the law function to allow the feature to create a solid surface blending two or more shapes that are located on different planes. This is a really pretty cool feature, and this is one of the uh, modeling features you're probably going to need for a lot of your reverse engineering projects. So um, very important to master this particular task. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is step one. It says to create a rectangle and dimension it to the value shown in the image and then extrude it to a value of 1.5 deep. So that image that it's referring to is uh, on page 10, at the top of page 10. So this is a pretty straightforward sketch. You should be a master at making these kinds of sketches at this point. So we're just going to take a rectangle, we're going to go boom, like that, and we're going to type in dimensions of 2.5, tab, and we're going to go 1.5, and then to, and hit enter. So uh, let's just kind of look and see what that looks like. Perfect, great, okay. 2.5, 1.5, and we're going to finish the sketch, and we are going to extrude that uh, a distance of 1.5, I'm just double checking the three to make sure I did it right, yep, 1.5, perfect, 1.5, and there we go, we got a nice little solid block out of that. Okay, so, okay, so we're gonna now, we've got these two things, we're gonna actually make two sketches, and we're going to do uh, one sketch in the front face, and we're gonna do another sketch in the back face. So let's start with the front face. We're gonna make a sketch, and we're gonna sketch sort of a triangle, okay? And we're gonna add some dimensions to kind of locate that in the right spot, so we're gonna do uh, oops, I didn't make that coincident. I want to make sure you make the lines coincident to the existing geometry. And uh, you don't have to nail it right away as far as where it's got to go. Uh, we'll add some dimensions to make sure that it's located in the right spot. And just these three dimensions will help us locate it. So 0.25 here, uh, 0.25 from the side, and then 0.25 from the other side. See how it automatically centers locates places that on there. Uh, and we're going to double check, we're going to add equal constraints. You see how it on the icon it has equal constraints there? We want to make sure that these side lengths are equal. And we're going to do that. And I'm going to make sure, uh, sorry, to make sure we add an equal constraint to that. We did. Perfect. Okay. So that's all set. Finish that sketch. Uh, sorry for that. There's the uh, notification. I've got some email. I'll check it after the video. Now we're going to go to the other side. Add a sketch to the back. Now in this sketch, we're going to make again a triangle. But this time, it's going to be dimensioned differently. So we're going to make this bottom point here 0.75 away, and then we're going to make these two points 0.5 there and 0.5 there, and then we're going to set these two side lengths equal. So that already is the case. Now I know I'm looking at it too, and you're looking at it as well, and it's kind of like, hey, wait, wouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't this be the case? Well, one thing we can actually do is we can actually make these perpendicular to each other, and that would actually help. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the other sketch. And the reason we're doing this is because we want this to be a right triangle. We want this to be as close to a right triangle as possible. So by making these two sides perpendicular, it actually forces them to be 45, 45, 90 triangles. And uh, if you're watching this uh, now, that means that you either are about to have a lesson on 45, 45, 90 triangles if you're in my geometry class. Or if you're in uh, Mr. Romanelli's or Ms. Uh, Ms. Jones's geometry class, you're about to have that lesson in the very near future as well. So I'm going to go back to that sketch and, uh, and make this 45, 45, 90 by making these two sides perpendicular. And if I do that over to constraints, I actually did that one properly already. So that's that. Okay. So we're all done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the loft command. Loft command is located here next to revolve. And we're going to, this is cool, check this out. We're going to select the front of the sketch and we're going to pick the deep V profile. Okay? The deep V profile, you said, right? Well, it's this one right here. Okay? Right? And then we're going to pilot shape start the loft. You must click the click to add, which is right here. Click to add. Now we're going to go to the back. To select this sketch and that feature right there. Okay? And then we click the small V. Choose the cut option by depressing the cut, which is right here. Kind of like you do the same options we have with our extrusion, right? We're going to cut those two things out. And check this out. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, there's your loft. And that's it. Save the part as loft cut IPT. So we'll do that. 
in the practice folder, loft cut dot ipt. Beautiful. Okay, that part is done, and we have one more part to go, uh, which is the automobile box female, uh, which is certainly the more difficult of the parts that we've done for this particular uh, project, but loft cut is done. Have a nice day. See you in the next video.